I bought the cheapest gaming PC on Amazon. For £390, I got an AMD Ryzen 5 6-core CPU, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, a 1TB hard drive, and Windows 11. Nice. So the gaming PC has now arrived and it's super lightweight. I'm kind of really excited to see what this is going to look like when we get it opened up because the pictures on Amazon didn't look that bad to be fair. Now I've got to be honest, it's probably been like 10 years since I last purchased a pre-built system. So I'm quite interested to see what we get. So the packaging so far is kind of random. It just looks like a load of rubbish from the warehouse thrown into the box. But it does look like we do get the box for our uh, motherboard with all the different accessories included in here, along with some of the packaging for the RAM. And then the PC is inside of another box. So let's try and get this out of the box without creating a massive mess. Because honestly, this is ridiculous. Ah, it looks really small. Hey, that's what she said. So first impressions of this PC, it's actually pretty decent. It's got a tempered glass side panel, which I didn't anticipate, and we'll do the peel later on in this video, but inside it looks really tidy. Like the components don't look as cheap as I was expecting. Like the RAM, for example, is Ballistic X RAM, 16 gigabytes of that. Whereas I was expecting some really cheap sticks that, you know, were pretty nasty. And there is space for us to add a graphics card if we want to upgrade this in the future. And on the whole, the cable management is pretty nice, but let's take a look at how it is on the back side panel. That's that's actually pretty neat. They've put some cable ties on here. It's running down. It isn't a modular power supply, so there's not too much they can do about this. And then right there, we've got our one terabyte hard drive. One week later. Now it's actually been almost a week since I unboxed this computer because it's been a total nightmare trying to get this thing set up. I've had countless issues with the hard drive and also the internet connection. Firstly, the hard drive seems to be maxed out at 100% all of the time while the PC is doing nothing. It's just sat and idle on the desktop. So I had to try and fix that issues and you know, delete load of the rubbish software that comes on these pre-builds. This is one of the major reasons why I never buy pre-built systems because they come with all sorts of nonsense on there that you don't want. Also, when I was installing games on Steam, sometimes they would be installing perfectly fine and then randomly the internet would just completely drop out. And this was while using a wired connection. I completely avoided using the wireless dongle because I just thought it'd be a total waste of time. So this was a bit of a frustration because you would leave it downloading games and then realize that the internet wasn't working. So you had to reset the drivers and go through all of that. So the first game that I want to take a look at is CSGO. I feel like Counter-Strike should be perfectly fine on a PC like this. We've got a half decent integrated graphics graphics system, decent CPU. I can't really see this being a huge issue. Now it's set all of the graphics automatically to high, which is a good sign. You got very high on everything. As you can see, it's taking ages to load in. We've been initializing the world forever and the maps aren't really that big on CSGO. So that's a huge drawback of obviously having a hard drive in 2022. So in the top left corner, I have got our FPS count and you, and you can see we're getting around 77 to 87 FPS. It's surprisingly performing really well. So you can play CSGO on this super cheap PC, which we were all kind of expecting and, and the input like doesn't seem to be too bad because what I found was on the desktop on this machine whenever you were just opening up Steam it would take like literally 10 years for Steam to open up or even if you were just selecting something in the start menu the, the lag was unbearable on Windows 11 just on the desktop but in this game the input lag doesn't feel too bad it does feel a bit spongy compared to what I'm used to on my normal PC but it's completely playable if you wanted to you know just play CSGO with your mates Look, we even got a kill. We won the round. So CSGO is definitely playable on this cheap PC. Next, let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2, which is going to be much more intense on that integrated graphics card. Again, just like with CSGO, Red Dead Redemption 2 takes forever to load in because it's a massive open world game. So now we are finally in Red Dead Redemption 2. And oh my word, this looks like a Nintendo DS game, but that's almost offensive to the Nintendo DS. This looks really bad. I, I'm, I have no idea what the graphics settings are. We're playing in 1080p, but it's just auto set everything and for some random reason my my horse is is inside of a tree uh, but it is running at 40 fps so it is playable red dead redemption 2 is playable you just have trees that have no branches and any leaves at all so according to our graphic settings we're using hardly any of the video memory but you can't really trust this to be honest i find with a lot of rockstar games like gta 5 it says you have loads of memory left so you crank up all the settings and it still really struggles it's, it's always been like this on the sort of rockstar engines it doesn't really seem to make much sense but let's actually put the resolution back to where it should be it seems to have changed for some reason and we'll we'll crank up some of these graphic settings now, apparently the texture quality is on ultra which i find very difficult to believe so we'll, we'll turn some of these up to maybe let's say let's go 
half a medium on pretty much everything across the board. Right, so to be honest, it doesn't look that much better, but the FPS is tr tr truly awful. Truly awful. I can't even say the word. It's, it's truly awful awful it's 18 fps the trees look no better even though they're now set to medium leaves the reflections nothing looks that much better other than the, the leaves on the ground that's the only thing that's remotely improved now a huge problem with this pc and i briefly touched on it when i was playing csgo when you move the mouse th there's a crazy amount of input latency and i know we're running at 20 fps right now so that's to be expected but it happens just across the board even in csgo this spongy feeling was there with the mouse input movement which is a bit of a game killer really when you're trying to play something like CSGO, it's quite competitive. You literally move the mouse and it just feels like it takes a multiple seconds. I've also noticed too, if you look at the right hand side of the screen, the mouse randomly appears on this, this quadrant of the, the display. I don't, I don't know why, literally it disappears there, then it appears there and then disappears there. Just like a brief point on the screen where it just appears. I've got a good feeling about Fortnite. I feel like this one's gonna surprise all of us. So settings wise, everything appears to be set to around medium and jumping into a game, it looks like we're hitting about 50 FPS. I know we're in the sky at the moment. Let's get down onto the floor. A few FPS drops there when we were approaching the floor. Wow, yeah, it's feeling a little bit little bit sluggish now it says we're hitting the 70 region but it's stuttering uh, hopefully that's coming across on the capture card but it, it's stuttering quite badly and someone's shooting at me oh my word what, what is this guy in pink i'm gonna take him out come on come on come on this guy's awful get in I'm surprised it has ammo with the amount of times that guy shot. He was like a stormtrooper. Literally didn't land a shot. I don't know what the range... Oh, what a shot. Oh, get in. So this is actually a fantastic experience. As you can see, we're ripping it up in the lobby without any issues. Solid 60 FPS. Few frame drops here and there. feel like we can maybe sort that out with a few tweaks to the actual... Are these dangerous? Oh my, what the... So that was quite a lot of fun, but I now want to see what we can get out of this PC if we upgrade it by adding a graphics card and also an SSD. While upgrading the graphics card, I noticed that these PCIe slots are absolutely horrible. In a normal case, you usually loosen off a screw here and then you can slide out the PCIe slot. But for some crazy reason, they are like attached to the case and you have to snap them off in order to free them. Also, the screws for mounting the graphics card to the case are missing and I've checked every single box and I can't find them. So the graphics card that I've added is the AMD 6500 XT, which you can pick up for around 200 pounds brand new. Now this isn't the best value budget GPU out there. You can probably get a little bit better performance for your money from something from Nvidia or even something that is used but with its four gigabytes of VRAM I think it should be pretty decent. With our new setup CSGO scored around 180 to 200 FPS which was an increase of around 100 FPS with the same high graphics settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 also saw a massive increase with a steady 55 to 60 FPS and we could now run much higher graphics settings with most parameters actually turned on to high and ultra. Fortnite's performance also stabilized with a steady 100 to 120 fps on the medium to high graphics preset so a big improvement in the graphic quality and the render distance with image tearing and frame drops no longer being an issue thanks to the dedicated gpu overall i've been really impressed by this super cheap gaming pc the performance out of the box was nowhere near as awful as i was anticipating with some little tweaks and upgrades that weren't too expensive we got quite a capable gaming system however as awesome as pc gaming is because of the xbox series s it makes it super difficult to recommend and purchasing cheap gaming PCs because the price to performance of the Xbox is fantastic. If you don't believe how capable the Xbox Series S is, you should check out this video next where I transform my Xbox into a budget gaming PC.